Welcome back. Um, <clears throat> I was just looking over these carbs before chucking them on. Uh, Sultan did a good job. Most of them are okay and sealed. Some are, that's a bit dodgy. I mean, to be fair, that is doing its job, but it's not ideal. The main thing here I'd like to know is, is it sealed or is um, petrol gonna fall out? But honestly, he did a much better job than I expected him to do. Uh, I, I really thought I was going to turn up today and, and it was, they were just going to be crap, basically. And they're not. They they could even seal. We could even get lucky. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do basically a bench test. I'm going to tip loads of fuel in like this, keep it the up, you know, the right way up, and see how much leakage we get, if any at all. If we're lucky enough, and my God, that'd be bloody lucky to have none at all, then the next step will be chucking these back into the bike. <clears throat> Honestly, not doing up anything, just chucking them in um, and adding some power to the thing over there and seeing if it just turns over at all. Uh, because it's, it's high hopes that the power system is working well. This package over here is the top end to my cafe racer. So at some point I'm gonna be pulling that out and just, just having a little play, not necessarily doing the works because I need the book and the talk specs and all of that but um, just kind of starting to throw it back together so I'm going to tip some fuel into, into these carbs we're going to let them sit for a bit and see if they're sealing at all so looking down the pipe you can see fluid in there um, see that that would have you believe that these carbs are full of fuel now I don't uh, hardly any went in so there's there's no way in hell that's going on i'm going to give them a tap to make sure the um the floats are working see if it goes down a little bit more see what happens there but there's no leakage at the moment but there's no leakage because there's probably no fuel in the carbs if i trusted the um screws down here more i don't know do one to see if there was any in it but I don't think, I, honestly, I, I just kind of trickled it. It stopped straight away as if it, got, it hit a dead end immediately. So I don't think there's fuel in any of them carbs. But we'll see. So I pressurised the hose, basically blew on it. Put some, uh, it, if the um, floats had got a little bit seized, then that would have unpressured them basically. Um, it, it's holding fuel, kind of. Um, I saw a spill somewhere, but I tipped the carb sideways. Um, so that was potentially my fault. At the moment, these bowls, if full of fuel, are holding fuel. By some miracle. So, uh, let's, let's at least pop them back into their housing on the bike. Step two, and let's hook up some battery and I don't even know where the key is to that bike but um, let's see what we can do okay guys so it's my bike that is uh, running let me turn my bike off my bike's hooked up to Sultan's bike right keep it simple we've hooked up the battery there is oil in it now um, this is the uh, we're not actually turning it over right now but that is something to do with the mixture isn't it okay. um, yeah Oh, come on. Um, there you go. Right, so, um, first thing first thing we noticed is that the key does actually have an immobilizer fob there. Um, I believe the fob touch place is here. And I believe you'd have to touch that to somehow take the immobilizer off. So at the moment, this is what I believe is going to happen. I think there's going to be some power to this bike. Some power. I think something will come up. Okay, wait a minute. So I'll tell you, wait a minute. So I think that's my guess. Something. We're just because we've got the power. Is that? So I think something will happen on on the screen. All right, we might get some sort of power. 
Then I think we'll have to look, for just very quickly and briefly look at, is there a horn, is there any real power going through it? And then I think we should turn it over gently a couple of times, just to kind of get the engine moving, get the new oil circulated. So that's, that's kind of my uh, thing. There's no throttle on it at all. We can't pull the throttle. I haven't hooked it up at all. Um, the airbox is not connected properly. You'd be very lucky for it to start up, but it's not about starting up. So Sultan, if you turn that key, I think we should have something easy. Even just the basic clock, just something. Ah. How are you? Mileage, mileage. I told you the mileage. mileage oh my God, I told you the mileage. Mm. <laughs> that means this hasn't run since 2006. But right, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just easy. easy. First thing I notice on there, What's there is the neutral light's not on. Oh, yeah. So are we in? That's the F. Ah, excellent. Okay, so neutral light works and lucky you didn't try and start it because second thing is does it have a ignition uh, clutch switch it might do you might need to have the clutch pressed in you probably do um, oh look at that clutch keyboard it's now sultana I'm, I'm suggesting you press that button listen though two or three seconds just just oh, the horn. no not the horn oh, numpty oh, no. and stop oh. how do you feel about that don't worry about the horn. What's wrong with you? All right, uh, kick it over again a couple of seconds, three or four. Morris, it's got no gas. It sounds quite healthy. It's got no gas. There's a touch of gas in there because I left it in. Gas. We're not American. There's a touch of fuel Petrol. in there. <laughs> Go again. And stop. Should we add some petrol? I'll, I'll tell you my thoughts, right? Um... The alarm system bugs me. I just don't know whether it's on or off. I don't know what it's doing. Um, if this light was flashing, I'd feel better because we'd know, we'd know what was going on. But I believe that is the fob system. So I believe all you do is touch your fob t to that. Stop messing around. Indicators, we need to check them. Um, don't worry about that. Uh, <laughs> and um, my thought is that we can put fuel in this and it will keep turning over but there may not be a spark. So I'd, I'd like to pop in a spark plug into this one and just see if it's sparking. Spark, compression, air. Yeah. Happy? Yeah. Can we do that? Yep, yeah. got it, got it, got it. So guys, we, we realized a couple of things. We think the immobilizer did work on here because when we touched the uh, immobilizer to the thing a second time, the fuel pump primed and uh, yeah, and that, so that obviously seemed to do something. Uh, clutch needs to be in to get sparks, so Sultan will hold the clutch in. He's gonna wear the fuel tank, that's always the safest thing to do. Now this bike could fire up, it's unlikely, there's, there's no revs at all. Let me see if I can get the choke going actually, hang on. All right, I can do some choke. Um, it may fire up, it may not. Go on in. Don't worry about that. And and stop there. Let's um let's try and get the airbox on. So guys, we've been turning this over and over and over. That there's kind of it's not giving us anything. We know there's some spark. We know that we were getting spark on at least number four. Um, but we also know that the electrics. Are pretty bad for example if I pop see this this is one of the coils pop this wire off I mean it's it's sorry bad cameraing but look it's that's that's crusty as hell so we're gonna do one at a time we're gonna give them all a good clean maybe the spark will become a bit stronger we're then gonna put the airbox on properly and seal it a bit better and then we will um, try again in case it's got a little bit more spark and the uh because through you know through better contact and the air box should be on properly making sure the air fuel ratio is uh, more appropriate for starting so guys um we're still kicking it over we cleaned the terminals we did get something we got like a uh 
uh, like something uh, but more fuel let's see what happens you guys will hear it in the same time we do Um, just, just it's a bit tappy. -tee. I'm, I'm aware the oil would have dropped because it would have circulated. Let's top up the oil. That sounded okay. <laughs> it probably was. Right, give us a minute, guys. So guys, uh, so guys, wait a minute. Um, yeah, go on. Let's just try and get it idling for a couple of minutes. Uh, we've just filled up the fuel. What else did we do? We did something else. What did we do? What did we do? Oh yes, we topped up the oil. Yeah. Guys, again, the immobilizer is working. We have to uh, remind ourselves of that. Engine does sound a little bit um, savagely, but I think that's quite normal at the moment because it hasn't run. Well, because of the mileage, 29,000, yeah. I mean, it had, remember, we know it hasn't been on the road since 2006. So we did top the oil up. We're gonna let the oil circulate and do its thing. And then I think it does sound quite loud, yeah, but that oil needs to circulate. I think it will quiet itself up. 
when the oil does its thing. We can't rev it yet, guys. We actually haven't got the uh, the throttle connected up. What we'll need to do is pop it all off, basically, and uh, pull it all, get it all seated properly. I'd love to hear some rest. Good healthy sound. This poor bike needs stop. <laughs> stop. burning. How have you gone from looking at that smoke, listening to that engine, and thinking the shocks need changing? Ah, uh, we got fuel spill. Well, that could even be coming out of a bowl or of the overflow. Oh yeah, no, that's coming out of the bowl, yeah. So guys, um, tough one to work out. The engine sounds a bit, you know, tappy T. Valves probably need adjusting. That is something we can do. It's not a huge issue. Uh, it, it's more likely that they're not out of adjustment. It's more likely that they just need proper lubrication and that they will um, loosen up themselves over time. The carbs are not sealed. The floats will probably, you will probably need to take the valves out and clean them. But, at the moment, this is a running bike, and you know that's that's good news. This is a currently a running riding no this is a engine starting bike. I'm not really sure it's really hard to work out what the next step is here sultan the um that exhaust wasn't loud though it's very very standard sound sounding exhaust there. Uh, I wonder how many cylinders it's it fired on. Let's have a look. Hot, 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 hot. Yeah, it's firing on all four. So what do we do? What do we do? Let's get the carbs out. We've got no choice. Let's get them. Let's get the carbs out again. I f I feel like we should just do the full carb. Pop the um, get the float valves out. That's probably priority. Get that cleaned. Get them seated, and try and reseal the carbs again. To be fair, I think you got three out of four done. Lovely. I think that's one that's messing around there. I think it's one that's got the... Yeah, possibly. Um, so I think we can get that fixed, and then I think when we come back, there's a big chance we can just. Put it all back on properly with the throttle, you see, and yes, yeah. I mean, that's, uh, my thoughts are, how about I'll pop, help me get the cobs off though, and then I'll um, start working on the cobs over there. You start loosening up the front end and working on the shocks. How about that part there? Or at least, yeah. yeah, you can do all of that. Start stripping the front, start loosening the, the shocks. Great. Uh, yep, they all need to come off. The, the front wheel needs to come off. What I'd do is I'd get two of my car jacks and put one on the left and one on the right. Yep. And then that should, so, so tilt the bike back basically up onto its arse. And then put the car jacks under. I, yeah. And then I'll, I'll do whatever I can with the carbs, which isn't a lot. And uh, we'll see where we go from there. It'd be lovely if we could piece this back together later with some throttle and rev it up. So guys, even though the carbs and stuff aren't really properly ready, we're messing with the front suspension. Honestly, I've broke three or four size 12s and a couple of size 11s, these as in um, bit sizes. 
the bolts are just wrecked. If you look at the caterpillar close, caterpillar, caliper closely there, we've actually had to hacksaw it off. Um, but remember, we're not using these shocks; they're ruined. But we've now got two bolts in that caliper that we just can't get off. So we're going to have to kind of manage it at some point and work that all out uh, because it's just everything we touch on this bike breaks either the head of the screw or nut or whatever it is or our tools and that includes using a um you know a ratchet gun a driver and a um you know and and breaker bars and and everything so it is it is a big old project this guys it's a bit more than that it's been sitting way 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 too long this one I, I don't think i'd easily take on a bike like this again because we uh because we, we thought it was just the i mean thinking bike. about let, let's think about the fact if we were breaking this bike right front shocks are wrecked anyway we can't do anything with them every bolt is is, is seized so like you know you can't pop the carbs off and sell them to someone because they're terrible you can't pop the engine out and sell it to someone because it's tappity, it needs adjusting. You know, the calipers are ruined unless we can get that bolt out, which I think we will, because now we've put WD in through the other side. But it's all hassle, that's the point. Um, what I might do if them calipers, so I'll take them inside, I'll use the Dremel on it actually, that's a good idea. Uh, but for now, let's get at least the new that's shocks on, and maybe the front wheel and at least then we'll feel a bit better like we've done enough work in two days it's, it's, it's a uh, it's a running bike it's, it's got an engine that works um he's just uh cleaning the forks uh very cinderella like um but uh, yeah here's the um the, well, i won't say finished product but it's something something nonetheless but um yeah, we're both deciding on our next project soon. I don't know. Yo, Charlie, what, what project do you want next? Huh? What? <laughs> what project do you want next? Uh, I've got my new... Um, oh, yeah, we haven't told you. Um, I've got the engine parts for the cab racer. I, I really wanted to do that today, but I thought I can't leave Sultan hanging. Yeah. And, 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 and look what we're left with. Oh, we're left with death. I mean, oh, um, Just like I, I want to get the calf racer up and running. Uh, and the Faradero, I want to... I mean, the Faradero will start and run and ride now. Uh, but I just need to get it perfected a little bit. But the carbs need just a tiny bit more. And the MOT. Uh, the Faradero, yes, the calf has an MOT. But what about the Faradero? No, it doesn't, because it's not really properly ready. The carbs need a little bit more work. Um, but the calf is MOT'd and ready to go. I just need to put the new pistons in, the new rings, the new head, put the valves back on, adjust the valves, put the engine back together. And it will probably still be broken. Yeah, I should become a cameraman. Quit my day job being a locksmith. Oh, but yeah, so I <laughs> literally never uses this. <laughs> uh, it's probably going to edit out. But um, yeah, like I said... Um, it's a, uh, what's, I wouldn't say half a bike, it's three quarters of a bike right now, but uh, we'll get onto it. Anyways, speak to you soon. So Sultan said, uh, I want to go home and eat, and I was like, no, let's just hack all this off. Um, I don't know why. Basically, we didn't realise that that front frame was fully bent, so with the new shock on, we basically can't tell what's straight and what's not. Um, so we need to hack off the same area we were meant to be hacking off anyway uh, to see what's going on because if you look we've, we've put one leg in but we're still kind of screwed uh, they're not going to come so the next cut maybe tomorrow Sultan will be here somewhere I can do it right now well if you can get in there but watch out for the wires I would say somewhere along here, so not on the thicker part. And grind up 100% would be good in this job. This is the reason It'd be I'm quick, out. it'd be quick, but yeah. yeah. I mean, I bought the Dremel. But... What does? It's at home, no, no, no. plug in. <laughs> 